watched the first video in the Greenhouse 2.0 series, you got a sense of what I built and why I built it. In short, my greenhouse uses both geothermal heating and compost heating. I've been taking detailed temperature measurements. In this video, I'll highlight the performance of the compost heating system. If you're impatient to hear the whole video, uh, I'm able to keep my greenhouse 12 degrees Fahrenheit or 7 degrees uh, C warmer than the outside on the coldest, uh, coldest time of the day here in December um, in Colorado. These results are really encouraging. Here's a summary of my 2018 greenhouse. The lower chamber contains a geothermal heat transfer system, or GAT for short. The upper chamber holds the hot compost. My leaf, shredded paper, and coffee compost mixture reaches a maximum temperature of about 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees C. I want to transfer some of this excess heat into my greenhouse. If I can raise the temperature by just a few degrees on a cold night, then I could possibly extend my growing season by a month beyond what I can achieve with an unheated greenhouse. Here's the compost chamber installed on the greenhouse. I built a reinforced subfloor to hold the weight of the compost. My first design used stackable plastic bins to hold the compost. Unfortunately, the compost never got hot. I should have known better, but I wanted the convenience of simply removing the bins to turn the compost. I quickly fell back to a chicken wire design, and this is working very well. I bought two heavy plastic pans and put them on the subfloor to distribute the weight and contain the compost. The total footprint is three by three feet or one square meter. I lined the compost chamber with one inch foam board, which I attached to the frame with small bungee cores. Then I cover the compost chamber with a tarp. Here's a clip of me mixing up the compost. I collect dry leaves and shredded paper, throw the mixture in a trash can, then add some coffee grounds and finally water. Repeat the process to ensure that you distribute the coffee and water evenly throughout the trash can. If it wasn't mixed at first, it will be mixed when you dump it in the compost bin. I have to thank uh, okay. Keith's Coffee Bar in Denver for continually um, and enthusiastically in supporting my composting experiments. The easiest way to move heat from the compost to the greenhouse is just to leave it open to the greenhouse, but this has some downsides. My compost doesn't smell bad since it's just leaves and coffee. The humidity, the humidity is the problem. I don't want the compost to dry out and I don't want the excess humidity in the greenhouse. So I covered the opening to the compost with plastic sheeting. I decided to install a simple heat exchanger to extract more heat from the compost pile. This is simply a four inch duct fan attached to both ends of a 15 foot dryer vent. All it does is blow air in a circle. I lay half the heat exchanger in the compost. The air is heated as it flows through this section laid in the compost. I don't put the heat exchanger into the core of the compost pile. It just sits near the top and I cover it with some uh, leaves and, and compost. The air in the heat exchanger is warmer than the greenhouse. So the aluminum walls of the dryer vent will easily radiate heat into the greenhouse. The cooled air returns to the compost pile to heat up again. To collect temperature data, I bought this digital thermometer as well as some two meter long temperature probes to reach where I need to put them. Here are the four temperature measurements that I took. One is outside, two is inside the actual heat exchanger, three is near the floor of the greenhouse, and four is inside the compost chamber. Here's a table of some early morning temperature readings taken for about a week. All the readings are in degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not going to go over them in detail. Just hit the stop button if you want to examine them closely. Here are some current conclusions of my compost system for greenhouse heating. The baseline temperature inside the unheated greenhouse is actually two degrees colder than outside. This is because the cold air in the greenhouse collects near the floor. When I added hot compost to the chicken wire compost bin, the greenhouse was four degrees warmer than the baseline. When I turned the GAT fan on, I got an extra degree of warming. When I added the first generation heat exchanger, the greenhouse was now seven degrees warmer than the baseline. Finally, when I added the current heat exchanger, put a small fan in the greenhouse to circulate the air, 
and added more hot compost, the temperature was a full 14 degrees warmer than the baseline. I think the compost heating worked very well here. What does 12 degrees Fahrenheit above the outside temperature mean? Uh, it means that the outside temperature can be 12 degrees below freezing and your greenhouse plants won't die. In my area, which is zone 5B, that's a full two months of season extension on either end. It means I can keep summer plants alive until mid-November, and it means I can confidently start uh, seedlings in mid-March. Could we do better than 12 degrees of heating? Uh, yes. I could definitely insulate my greenhouse better. I could fill the compost bin with more compost. I could improve the heat exchanger and bury it uh, deeper in the compost pile to extract more heat. Hopefully this video gives you some idea of the results you could achieve from a compost heating system. I would get better performance if I just put the compost pile in the greenhouse, but A, I don't have the space, and B, I want to keep the moisture near the compost pile and not inside my greenhouse where it can cause uh, fungus. Please hit like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and definitely uh, click on the notification bell and YouTube will send you a message when I post a new video. Thanks.